I'm honoured to have my first ever guest on my channel. My girlfriend, Helen. Hi. Say hi. So yeah, want to say something about yourself? Nothing. <laughs> I'm the imaginary girlfriend. Hi. I'm really good at uh, VFX, you know, I just made a CGI model that I've of, uh, put, in, put into um, the video. Yeah. But, uh, no, uh, anyway, what are you going to say? She's an artist, she does drawing, um, like this thing. Whoa, just carefully. See, she drew those birds. She Yay. draws lots and lots and lots and lots of birds all the time. Um, yeah, I'll put that back. I'll get killed if I drop that. Anyway. Um, you will. <laughs> yes, why have I given scissors to you? I don't know. I'm going to have a scissors fight. Anyway, nope, we're going to um, unbox something. This box. Let's take it apart. Let's attack. Find out what, what's, uh, what's in it. Do you want to take a guess? What, what do you think is in it? A box. Uh, is another box inside the box? It's like one of the, like those Russian dolls. It's just a series of uh, dolls inside the dolls. It's going to be just boxes inside boxes. Yep. There probably is going to be a box inside the box. I, I, oh, it's right. Yeah. Or have you really opened this up beforehand and then you just sort of taped it up? So that's, that's, that's how you it. knew. Uh, I've got no, no idea. Oh, it's a cell phone here and accessories and other tonics. Maybe this is my new cell phone. I hope so. Really? A cell phone? It's a huge box. <laughs> yes, this is one of those 1980s cell phones where you like walk around and, and, and talk like this. So Hi there. Basically, half of the box is a battery, right? <laughs> you know, when I was back at university, you know, back in the early 2000s, one of my friends did have one of those giant brick phones that would bring around university, which is just nuts. That's cool. Um, just but cut yeah, it open. I've been slumming it using an iPhone for the first time ever. Okay, that's not And yeah, it see, truly was terrible. I was I'm very right. Much, there were so many boxes. I'm very much looking forward to uh, there are many using boxes an Android again instead of an iPhone, which okay. I just thought, ugh. So there's a folder first. So yeah, I've got a Samsung S7, which should be in here. S7. Yes. Oh my god, seven. Samsung, seven. Okay, I have to run. <laughs> For my life. Oh dear, so many people get this mixed up. It was the Samsung S7 Note that had, the, had a few small problems of so being an explosive basically bomb. Basically, you combine Samsung and the seven together, that's boom. Yeah, yeah. no, but it was just that the S7 Note, that, that actual S7 never had any issues. Although, I don't actually have the S7, I got the S7 Active. But it's already variant open. Of, of the S7 Why that was open? especially waterproof. Well, the reason for that is that um, if you read it, it says opened by USA Warehouse. So they would have opened it up to check what's inside there, what's oh. the value, or so but forth. They found this so basically, I used the, this, this service called U-Shop, which is run by Incident Post, and they basically take, they give me sort of this, this fake American address. So when I want, if I want to buy something that doesn't ship internationally, I'm buying, or sometimes even it does ship internationally, but then charge this insane shipping costs. So I'm like, no, no, no. Um, I just ship it to my USA weird, USA address, and uh, then it reships to me here in New Zealand. There's so that's what kind of happened battle. here. Oh. I ordered a bunch of stuff, and then I consolidated this down into just one big box. Okay, so um, this is a glass protector and there's ah, a cable. There you go, open it. And so there's actually sort of several parcels inside this one, but you're opening up the... the oh, I think I got a phone. Cell phone. So I'm actually... One reason I got the S7 um, sensor in particular is because it's... Uh, I can use it with my VR360 camera, also from Samsung. So I'm a bit of a oh. VR nerd, so I like that. Is that a second-hand so. one? Yep, I'm a cheap bastard, so I'm not buying it brand new. I'm, because basically I waited sure? for the S8 to come out and I was like, yes, that's going to make the S7 prices go down like this. And so yeah, you can see how this is different from the S7, if you recognize them. It's a little bit sort of thicker, because it's got a oh. much bigger battery. It's going to have a better Chuck. battery life. So that's an upside, and it's just got, it's, it's, apparently it's, it's more ruggedized and tough, because I do lots of cycling around in all kinds of weather, and I take it out, they can have a harsh life, actually that's how my last self and died, I don't want a bike ride, and um, so yeah, this, this is the Samsung S Active, it's just meant to be extra tough and extra long battery life, and yeah, this, this looks and feels good, happy, so um, yeah, no real. I mean, even though it's second hand, 
it's not a real scr it's like a very very faint scratch here on the screen no, but no, you've got, got to look very here, carefully look oh yeah and you've got like a few dings up here but like it's nothing more than just what it would get normally in my normal life after a few months what's the point in like getting a perfect brand new pristine phone when it's just going to end up looking like this soon enough anyway might as well just save a few hundred dollars and get it from that from the start anyway moving on from oh yeah this is this is the special screen i should put on top Okay, anyway, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. What are you, what are you opening up now? I don't know. Oh, this Can is I just, phone, just say mine's bigger than yours? <laughs> That's the... Which, which iPhone do you have? Six. Six. I'm glad I don't need to use an iPhone anymore. I've been using an iPhone 5 for the last oh. few weeks for this one. Oh. Aha! Yes! yes! Going back to my point about buying stuff second hand. Quite often when you buy second-hand items, there might be stuff missing from it. And uh, so that is the benefit of uh, this piece that I've ordered, is it's basically um, 10, I think, it, antennas. Because yeah, quite, quite often I've been finding when I've been buying second-hand Electrosonics, um, transmitters and receivers, they don't come with a lav mic, they don't come with the antennas on the receivers or transmitters, they're just simply that block of metal with all the other tornadoes inside it and um, that's fine I don't mind I'm getting them at really cheap prices on eBay if you just hunt around for a while and you know exactly what you're looking for they're bargains to be found and then you know it just costs a few more dollars I, I found a good place to buy these so um, yeah uh, what can I really say about them you can buy them um, at different lengths than tenants so um, so the different electrosonics are different blocks they call them and that those blocks are the range of frequencies that they, they can work so um, like you can get block 24 which would be something 613 to 640 megahertz or something I don't know I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be off by a few megahertz I'm sure so yeah and so then a block 26 would would, would be and you just have an antenna that's a certain length to sort of match what the certain number of modifications of the wavelengths or fractions of the wavelengths or whatever. They should remember that better. But anyway, there's, there's a connection here between frequencies um, and wavelengths and thus the correct antenna length. Now, basically, the higher the block, the higher the, um, the, the longer, the, the, the higher the frequency it would be and also the longer the antenna needs to be. So you could potentially, if you're struggling to find like a really cheap block 21 antenna for sale, buy like a block 29 that nobody wants, because nobody uses block 29 really aside from a few places, because it's generally often illegal. Buy some cheap block 29s, just snip off a little bit so it's the right length and bingo, you've got now got a matching antenna for yours. Another fun little point is um, you can often if you find yourself in a pickle and you've, you, you, you haven't got a white right antenna, maybe one just broke or, and uh, you haven't got time to like you cut this down to, 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 to shape because you're on set or whatever, you can pretty much use one that's say just a block up or, up or below, pretty much okay. Um, anyway, she's racing ahead of me. Stop, stop, wait. Just really unbox another thing. Well, this is a way to like really be a machine like position and knock out some <laughs> unboxing videos. Okay, one of the other thing that's uh, in here. Um, this is the sound devices. Now, I always get them a bit mixed up. MP1 or MM1? This is the MP1? Uh, I can't quite remember. Should be, where does it say? Should say it on it somewhere. Ah, there we go. MP1. I was right. Cool. So basically, I'm sure this is all this rustling is going to be really bad in the sound when I'm listening to it later. I'm going to be so annoyed. Shh, shh. I'll get in that soon. Thank you. Ah. Anyway, <laughs> focus. Um, so yeah, so the reason I can get the MP1 and M1 mixed up with the sound devices is basically the M M1 is a newer one. It's basically identical to this. It has a second knob. Oh yeah, I'll get to the point. Wait, what is it? It's a knob. First of all, what is this thing? What is this thing? It is just basically a, a preamp. That so it's got phantom power here for you if I want to hook up a microphone like the one I'm using up here in the AKG Blue Line series. I can uh, hook that microphone up, give power to it, and then give whatever amount of... Oh, it's clicked. You can't smoothly move it. If you're shh, really quiet, we can hear that 
clipping. And we can freaking hear all the noise out there as well, I'm sure. We live in the central CBD, so it can be a bit annoying, especially on a weekend night in town like it is tonight. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's not like a smooth gain knob. So you definitely don't want to be changing this during a take, because uh, that's very noticeable. You'll have step changes again. Plus, you know, you might hear the noise. So you can see, step, step, step. And um, so, what do you say about this? So yeah, uh, this gives you sound devices, sound devices quality preamp. So just glorious if you if you want to, you know, need have a need for this at some place. So like I, for instance, might use this when I've got some kind of um, XLR microphone I'm using as a plant mic, and so I might then feed this in to it, small way hidden over there, and then I'm feeding out to the wireless and and transmit it back to where I am. Um, so that's one use for it, and I want to say, this this design, <laughs> does it look good with it? There we go. So, um, this here um, is you'll put in two AA batteries, and it's very similar design with, with the screw, um, screw on cap and sort of cylinder of sliding it in, just like I have with my Sanofi 552, that's, I'm down there and kind of sort of not really looking at the levels, but yeah, I'm sure they're all Good, bouncing around, seeing a bit of a red, a bit of a blues and oranges and whatever, all those pretty LED colours. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's got the options here of turning phantom off, or 48 volts or 12 volts, gives you line out. Oh, it doesn't give you microphone out. And you've got an option of putting the limiters on or off. You can turn if you want to uh, have a uh, filter cut there, so yeah, lots of options. Anyway, so now I've kind of explained what the Sanofi's MP1 is. So what is the MM1? It's a high-end one that I'd kind of like to get, but it's a bit more expensive because you just, well, I just, yeah, it's newer, so I just don't see so many of them around second hand, but I might get an MM1 uh, one day if I see that at Sanofi's for sale. So the difference is, is that it has a headphone output. So this is really good for your boom up or other scenarios, you could wear this on your, on, on your hip heel and then um, you sort of lis listen to it before you, you're sending it out. And um, so yeah, I just, yeah, I really wish it, it had uh, a headphone in, but that's why they brought out the newer model after this one, the, the Sound Devices um, MM1. And uh, so that's what the second knob they have on it, is to be able to adjust it. I wonder if the headphone volume knob might be stepped, and I wonder if the if the M M1 is also stepped because it might be nice if they've changed that. Then again, you know, if you put it in as a plant mic, it would be nice to have it locked off and not adjust it. Anyway, rambling on, what am I going to say about this? Oh, yes, I'm going to say um, Sound Devices from memory, I think, was founded by a bunch of engineers from this company called Shura, who at the time were one of the dominant players in terms of making mixes. Uh, for the film industry and TV industry. I mean, sure, it's still a really big, famous company, but they just kind of have lost that market niche now. But they, you know, they're a big, dominant company in the areas of microphones. I mean, you know, the Shure M SM58 or whatever it is, that's obviously, you know, like a ridiculously common microphone that bands will use and so forth. Anyway, um, I'm rambling on. Um, so there were basically some engineers at Shure, and I think from memory, what I heard was that they were kind of wishing that the company would go into a bit of a different direction in terms of some of the product lines and, and focusing on the needs for the film industry. And so as the mixes that Shaw was making was not really developing that way, they thought they might go off and sort of start their own company to cater to the Pacific sort of niche needs of the film industry. So they're finding their own company, but they still, I, th I guess, remain really good terms with the people that they used to work with back at Shaw because their first products were actually... Um, rebranded or, or being made for sure. So this, you can buy the exact identical same one that has a Shure logo instead of a Sound Devices logo on it. It is the Shure FP22, I think. Don't shoot me if I get it wrong. It might very well be the FP23 or 24. I know they've got three different products there and that's all slightly different, but it's one of those. I'll put a note down 
um, and the video description saying exactly which one it is. So yeah, so the, the fun thing is you can often find that even cheaper than the genuine sound devices one if you're looking for it online because sure it doesn't actually have the same brand name today in 2018 um, in this market niche as sound devices has of course which is a very well known company but the, but the weird fact is that back then way back then when they, when they brought out their, their very first products that um, sure was a big prestigious brand name and sound devices were like who the hell are they so <laughs> The sure product of this sold at a higher price than what this sold for. It actually cost more to buy the one that had a sure sticker on it that was otherwise absolutely 100% identical to this than this one. So uh, yeah, there's a little fun fact from history about that and I'm going to have to do a little comparison one of these days with this next to the sure. And uh, yeah, you'll see like, ah, the same product, it'll be spooky. Um, I can't actually do that right now because I've actually lent out um, my one to a friend of mine and he's been using it for the last few months or something. I think he's uh, you maybe using it with his Zoom H4N because, uh, yeah, this is, this is maybe, maybe not, I probably wouldn't recommend that use today because an H4N is just so bad, don't go buying it. But if you had an H4N, um, especially back in the day when you didn't have any other options, you could use this in front of it and you wouldn't have the problem of the freaking awful, awful preamps that the Zoom H4N has on it. And instead you get beautiful, clean sound devices preamps. Anyway, huh, back, back on topic. Thank you, my dear. Um, Why are there what, those bones What do you it? think these are? Why? Yeah, so you don't go back to my point about, I can often buy secondhand stuff really cheap, but they might be missing something like this, but that's not a big deal because it all otherwise works fine. You can pick these up real cheap and then you have a complete working item that is just fantastic. Same thing here. Um, I got these pretty, pretty, pretty cheap indeed. But where is the? But yeah, they don't. Thing. They don't have in here. Um, it's not just sponge so much. It's actually a gel filled one that they have. Yeah, that's exactly um, what I mean. So these kind of like ouch. They they hurt a bit if you don't have exactly. those there. Where additionally, is? additionally, um, you don't have any sealing to to keep out the noise. But without that, yeah, that's right. So yeah, apparently a common problem with these pair of headphones is that that the gel pads would break and leak so yeah i guess it's not that unusual to see one of these for sale without them because because they're paying the part that would break the most um not that you even see many of these for sale online i i have been wanting a pair of these for a very very long time indeed now these headphones are exactly the same as the ones that sitting there on top of my camera that I was using one to the camera audio before. Okay. Those are the um, what are they? The Sony MDR seven five oh six for memory. Um, and these what what they've done? There's this company called Remote Audio that that's that's a pretty well known sort of company that specialises with this little niche that is. Uh, production sound and they have taken those Sony ones and they've pulled out the headphone drivers and heel and stuck them inside this instead so you have exactly the same um, listing experience and in and, and the way it responds to sound with these as you do with that pretty much industry standard um, uh, Sony headphones over there so the, the great thing though then is that um, if you're really used to listening to what sounds and what microphones sound like with those kind of headphones, you switch over to these, you're still going to get that same kind of um, experience. You'll be, you'll be tuned in to, to what you expect. Mm. But the difference is they've bought really, really high-end, high-grade um, uh, sort of just, just noise isolation. So, so mm. just like people in the construction site next door uh, who have been building that building for ages and just... Uh, freaking racket over there and it's just it's been like that for a few years now because it's been this building across the road being built and it's about to start another one and it's, it's down to living through living city there's always construction going on so yeah, yeah are, are you, exactly are, like are, I'm are blocking you, you are you enjoying listening to me so now she, just, she doesn't find my uh tech nerd is some quite as fascinating as I do. Um, anyway, so just like those people have to wear hearing protection in a sense this is hearing protection but we've got a uh, um 
uh, uh, the, the, the normal headphones would use so we can hear what we're recording. So this is, this is really good if you really want to be super critical about what exactly is it that I'm actually recording. Because sometimes you, you might be struggling to really, really sense um, what it is you're recording versus what might be leaking in from the other noise around in the environment. Um, like, uh, yeah, so... Um, it's useful for, for, for that, that fact, and like yesterday's shoot, for instance, mm. oh my god, we were filming right next to this really busy road, and it was a tough day at the office for me, just trying to get good good, good audio under these difficult circumstances, just probably the worst I've had, yeah, definitely one of the worst I've had this year, but probably the worst in the last six months or so, just, it was tough, I mean, I mean, no matter like, what your technique is, and all the or what experience or what gear you're using. It's just, if you're in a high noise environment, it's kind of difficult to get sort of stuff. But at least, if if, if, I'd, if only I'd had these back, back then yesterday, well, with the gel pads, of course, which I have ordered separately now, because I, mean, I knew on the eBay listing it didn't have it, so I already knew he had a time to order them, and they should be arriving sometime soon. Um, if I'd had them, I'd then have like a clear idea, like, am I, how much of that car passing by am I recording Versus how much is it, am I just hearing that car directly because it's passing right by where I'm standing? I mean, we've been filming literally on the road at times. Uh, I helped out production and brought along some spare high-vis vests I earned, seeing as I didn't have any. That was a uh, little help. Uh, anyway, what am I rambling on about? But yeah, basically, oh, I was watching um, this uh, Vimeo video, or I think it was on YouTube too, about... Um, it was an interview, was it Gotham Sound? I think Gotham Sound was doing an interview with this pretty famous production mixer. Not so famous for me to remember his name off the top of my head though. Uh, anyway, doing an interview with him about his card and all the gear on his card about what he uses for it. And he was via watching that video a couple years back that I first came across and found out about these. And I, and I, sort of, I, look, I was curious and I was looking it up and, and it's like, man, this is pretty cool. I really want to try out one of these here for my own. And uh, so basically I set up a saved search a saved search on eBay and just waited and waited and waited and waited. And uh, eventually I got lucky and here it is. I mean, that, that's sometimes what, what I need to do, you know. I, I, I research and I'm always inquisitive and looking about stuff and, and then sometimes I just need to sit and wait for, for it to show up on eBay. But I have like as tons of saved searches for all kinds of things like this uh, AKG microphone I have up there I'm recording with me, that's how I found out, I had a search set up for ages before I found one. And um, so yeah, you know, if you try, you really get some good bargains. Anyway, have I talked to you enough about this? What can I say? Nice I was soft. finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is pretty tough, heavy grade. But yeah, anyway, that, that, that guy they're interviewing, um, he's won many awards and so forth, he he's, was... Wow, you can take this apart. Yeah, so you can definitely something. replace this easily. Huh. Be careful. Yeah, I've had it for five minutes and I'm breaking it already. Now I'll screw that back in. But yeah, that's interesting. You can, you can swap this out easily. I'm not quite sure. I guess it does make it easy to surface, but why would you have that like that? Anyway, he was talking about how he used these headphones once for for some shoot in which he was having to record in a noisy environment. But then, um, after he got it, he just he said he enjoyed it so much, he ended up using it all the time for every shoot. Um, I might not go that far, though, because it is pretty heavy. And actually, you know what? I was just thinking, maybe even for some scenarios, like yesterday when we were shooting next to that busy road, I might not actually want to use headphones like these because I would want to keep a bit more of a situational awareness of what's going around me when I'm next to a busy road with trucks racing down it. Because uh, yeah, it's kind of annoying a little bit when you're on film sets because you know, you, you've got the, these headphones on all the time and, and people might come up to you and go and you know, ask you a question or, or, or um, you know get you off and do something, whatever. But you just sometimes don't realize they're like standing there next to you, talking to you because you know, they're not right in front of you, and, and, and if you've got your headphones on, you know, you, you don't necessarily hear what's going on. You, you're hearing what's at the end of your boom pole, where, 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 where your uh, microphone is, which could be, you know, a few feet up in the air, or over there, 
or you know you, you might you might be hearing you know all your labs going into your ears and you and you've got those microphones scattered all over the set all over the place so you're you're hearing all that and so you don't, don't notice somebody's talking to you right then i'll probably seem a bit rude sometimes i mean it's not like it's not like i'm not annoying you i just like i don't realize you're talking to me unless you you know speak up a bit louder or you come into, into my field of vision and of course if i start wearing these all the time it's just going to be a thousand times worse. I will have no idea. You could probably come up to me right here and start talking right next to my ear and I will not know. Well, yeah, if you touch it, I'll be about to tell. Uh, anyway. Is that the whole box? Yep. Sure. Oh, there are just four things in it. That's Double it. Double check. That's it. That's all I'm protecting. Oh, how sad do you feel? It's over. Hot. Bye-bye. Really, really hot. Bye. <laughs>